All right, let's go ahead and uh, get the get this going. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Greg Chase. I am the director of uh, product marketing here at Teleport. I'd like to thank you all for uh, coming to join today's webinar. I'll be talking to you today about high points of our our uh, re uh, product release announcements today. Uh, we will be taking questions mostly towards the end, but I'd like to invite you to enter your questions into the Q&A tool and we will get to them as we are able. With me is my colleague, Ben Arendt, Director of Product for Teleport. Would you like to say hi, Ben? Yeah, thanks, Greg. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming today. Um, you know, the Teleport 5 is a really big release for us. We only really do one major version a year. And so, um, for existing customers, I know there's lots of features in here that you've been keenly waiting. Um, and for people who are new to the Teleport ecosystem, now's a great time to get on board and, um, you know, use Teleport. All right. So uh, lots of announcements today for us. So uh, if you didn't catch this news, uh, we changed our name. Uh, the gist is, uh, as our open source product Teleport has become more and more popular with engineers, uh, its fame has actually uh, increased beyond that of our company's old brand, Gravitational. Uh, because of that, because it has such a because it's such a great product with a great name, we basically became known as, oh, you're the people who make Teleport. So uh, we chose to go with the flow uh, and communicate our company's focus on continuing to make the Teleport every, even better, uh, growing the community and evangelizing its adoption. So we are now Teleport and you can find us at goteleport.com. So now on to product. Um, let's take a quick review about Teleport for those of you who might be new to Teleport. Um, we created Teleport to help engineers deal with gaining access to disparate systems in the cloud. In today's cloud native environments, engineers have many different endpoints they need to be able to log into, often spread across many networks, both in data centers and in, uh, uh, and in various VPCs on cloud providers. Despite all these security obstacles, uh, these systems don't comply with security standards such as SOC 2, PCI, or FedRA. This is because there's usually no way to ensure consistent identity of users between all of them. And that's assuming if the system has uh, has security at all. Uh, often we end up issuing long lasting security keys and uh, username password credentials for different systems that can be leaked or compromised. Uh, and there's uh, no consistent way to, uh, to ensure visibility about what users are doing uh, between these different systems as they log in. So this is why we created Teleport to provide easier access to systems uh, to delight our engineers, at the same time providing security that's compliant with standards for our security operators and to automate as much as possible the management of access control and security for our IT operators. So here's what makes Teleport simple for engineers to access their systems. Uh, in this case, we have a developer who has a variety of systems they want to be able to log into. So for example, uh, maybe they have a Linux server or Grafana dashboard on their company network, as well as their developer infrastructure, like their Git repository, Jira, and their CI CD system. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, they have an AWS VPC where maybe they need to be able to access Linux instances and Kubernetes clusters where they're deploying or administering their applications, and then they want to get into the applications themselves. So we bring in Teleport to provide a unified access plane to proxy authorized secure connections to these systems. Teleport provides a number of ways to log into the systems. Uh, Teleport has its own command line tool, TSH, that acts like the familiar SSH CLI, but with some additional features. Uh, it also supports SSH uh, and uh, supports kubectl for when you need to log into Kubernetes clusters. And we provide a web client if you don't want to log in with uh, uh, if you want to be able to log in without installing software on your system. Incidentally, this web client does provide a terminal interface and it turns out to be really popular with users that are working in web-based applications such as Jupyter. Uh, this way they can just stay in the same browser. So the developer logs into the Teleport proxy service. Uh, if it's their first time, they will be authenticated by their SSO's identity provider such as GitHub or Okta. After which, Teleport returns a short-lived certificate uh, so that the end user will be able to continue to log into systems for which they have access privileges according to their role and for as long as the certificate is valid. The length of this, the lifespan of the certificate is set by your policy. So maybe, for example, it would be sufficient for a day. Now, suppose your engineer needs additional 
privileges such as they want root access as admin or maybe they are uh, uh, joining a customer team and need to be able to reach a managed system for the customer. Uh, the engineer can request temporary elevation to additional roles and operators will be notified in an automated workflow of this request, allowing them to approve or deny. Workflow, uh, these workflows plug into popular platforms such as Slack, PagerDuty, or Jira, and there's an API to make your own integrations as well. Once this authentication and authorization is complete, uh, teleport then proxies and encrypted connection to the end systems. It's easy peasy, that's why engineers love teleport. So now let's move on to today's product announcement. We'd like to announce the uh, forthcoming availability of Teleport 5. If this were a movie, I suppose we'd call it the rise of the unified access plane. Uh, specifically, we have uh, Release Candidate 2 available on the GitHub for download and for testing, and we uh, expect uh, GA to be available day to day as we uh, uh, complete our testing. So <clears throat> up to now, Teleport has made it easier for engineers to securely connect to servers and Kubernetes. So what is it that our engineers are doing when they connect to these systems? Well, they're deploying, running, testing, and administering their applications, of course. So a next obvious evolution for Teleport is to help our customers connect to their applications. When we talked to the Teleport community about what kinds of problems they would like to solve with this application access, they shared the following. For many, accessing their developer infrastructure is a frustrating experience because they can only get to it via VPN. At the same time, there's, there's security compliance issues with tracking who's doing what in these systems. Many of our users need to secure access to their operational control panels. Uh, every, every company has their home built ones and there's a lot of open source uh, infrastructure like Kubernetes dashboards and PHP my admin, which are famous for not having very strong security. And then there's compliance issues for applications that hold customer data. This might be your own internal uh, operational applications, or this could be the customer's infrastructure, such as a managed service or a dedicated tenant. In such a case, your customer will be imposing any compliance requirements they have onto your company by contract. So uh, better be ready for that. So yeah, otherwise pretty much the same kind of pain points uh, we talked about before, just extended to our applications. So why might you wanna take up these new capabilities of Teleport 5? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you'll make your engineers happy with an improved user experience in accessing their applications. You can further automate your platform operations around access control. Uh, you can meet your customer requirements for compliance, which means this means you're handling more use cases and your salespeople can drive more revenue. Uh, you'll be able to avoid potential liability from data breaches and you'll be able to better protect the reputation of your company's brand. We all remember that recent Twitter hack that had Barack Obama and Elon Musk hawking Bitcoin. Uh, let me just be clear. So far as I know, uh, Barack Obama does not give out Bitcoin. So as you can see, Teleport 5 is a huge release for us as we begin to deliver on our vision of Teleport becoming a unified access plane. With Teleport, uh, now you can centralize uh, access control for remote Linux servers, Kubernetes clusters, and web applications. And uh, we're even going to reveal uh, uh, some cool stuff we're doing for databases very soon. So uh, top line capabilities for Teleport 5 include uh, the new access management for web applications. We've also significantly revamped our Kubernetes access capabilities. Uh, and there's a whole truckload of additional feature improvements, which Ben will be touring us through in a moment. So let's uh, deep dive into the new application access capability. Uh, now your users can quickly find and connect uh, to their applications. Uh, this involves a number of features, including providing a single login for all the applications uh, that's authenticated by SSO and knowing what the, your users access authorizations are while at the same time we dynamically maintain a catalog of applications the end user can access. Um, we allow you to control user access uh, by role across your applications. So this is where RBAC truly shows its power when you're, uh, when the access, the, the role description transcends multiple applications. When a uh, engineer, what, what role your engineer has should dictate whether uh, and what kind of access they should have to these applications. This also allows your company to practice least privileged access policies uh, for your internal applications. Uh, having uh, having a unified access plane for uh, uh, that provides role role based access privileges um, allows you to actually control across different types. 
So maybe uh, your engineer who's working on a customer problem not only gets application access to the customer's control panel, but they also get access privileges to the servers or Kubernetes clusters that serve, serve that customer. We make it possible to uh, um, add security to your legacy apps without modification. Uh, every, every one of our companies has applications with no security controls whatsoever, and then even more with very simplistic unintegrated uh, password credentials. Teleport's ability to proxy authorize access into these applications um, means you, you can essentially wrap compliant security around each of these user sessions without having to modify that th the third party application. You can restrict access to just the users who need these privileges and capture what it is they're doing for future auditability. Um, this also means you can eliminate the management of a lot of shared secrets. Finally, uh, we allow you to easily support role-based features in your custom applications. So this is a case where your engineers are developing an internal application and they use Teleport to uh, easily integrate with SSO and then implement the, author, uh, the role-based authorization. Uh, Teleport will send a JWT token in the HTTPS session header, uh, which then the application can read and use this to determine what the, in, uh, the inside app uh, access capabilities and customization should be. So what can you do with this amazing new capability? Uh, use cases include uh, being able to uh, provide easier access for your self-hosted developer infrastructure. So uh, make it easier for your developers to reach their your Git repositories, issue trackers, portals, bug databases, and, and CI CD infrastructure. Um, at the same time, uh, you're getting unified access control and visibility about what your users are doing with their logins. Um, we make it possible to improve your security operations infrastructure. Uh, so you can get these, con these control panels integrated with your SSO, uh, allows you to authorize access by role and you get an auditable history of what these users are doing. And uh, you as we mentioned before, you can wrap the security uh, via user access sessions, uh, and you but you won't have to necessarily modify these applications themselves. Um, you get uh, compliance security for your sensitive data in test and sandbox environments. Let me unpack this a little bit. Uh, uh, but it's actually something we heard from a number of customers. Um, so many, many engineers actually use live customer data when they're building their next version of their software. Uh, and this could be data that includes um, uh, uh, PII data or say like sensitive health data. And you might be going, well, why don't they create demo data? Or why don't they create do anonymization and obfuscation? Um, the simple answer is it takes a lot of work to do that. and it, has limited value in testing because you don't necessarily get all the proper data. Uh, and it definitely increases the friction of the, uh, of the R&D and testing process. Um, it turns out for many of these customers, it's uh, sufficient uh, to meet uh, standards of SOC 2, HIPAA, PCI, and FedRAMP if there's authentication, authorization, and uh, logging of users' actions. And then uh, finally, uh, you can get access, you can provide access control for your customer managed system. So this is similar to the operational infrastructure use case. Basically, we're talking about uh, managing the customer's control panels and the customer's infrastructure. So uh, of course, your customer wants to ensure that only uh, authorized folks from your company can access their systems and data and they want what's being done logged. Uh, and as I've said before, if your customer is uh, has to comply with security standards themselves, such as maybe they provide services to the uh, federal government, uh, they will pass on requirements for you to be compliant with uh, FedRAMP, for example. So uh, next up, uh, we have also made substantial improvements to our Kubernetes access. Uh, it's now much easier to handle higher scale Kubernetes deployments. Uh, and first of those is we've made it uh, much more efficient to manage uh, access control for multiple Kubernetes clusters using a single teleport unified access plane. Uh, we've also improved our native integration with Kubernetes with better event logging, uh, bringing short-lived credentials to the kubeconfig and uh, providing advanced RBAC mapping to Kubernetes groups and users for when you are working with kubectl. So, but wait, there's still more. Um, I think this is a good point for Ben, for you to take on and uh, continue the, the uh, tour of what we were providing here. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, 
for the great intro so far. Um, hi everyone. Um, so I'm going to be just going through what else is new and giving you a product tour. And so to digest everything that Greg has done, it's a lot. I'm going to pile in more things, but I'll dive into the product tour afterwards. So um, two new features we've added is cluster labels for trusted clusters and a waiting room. These can be combined with our access workflows. It can be a little hard to tell you as a bullet point, but I'll do a demo um, afterwards to show you how you can use Teleport to really lock down access in your organization and uh, provide it using our um, administrative t -cuddle. Um We have created two new auto installers for servers and applications. This helps you get up and running really quickly. Um, it auto detects the OS and it's a great way to get started before you sort of terraform out all of your infrastructure. Other improvements are a um, UI user management. Um, so we have some basic user crud and this can be also helpful in combination with our audit log to figure out who's logging into the system. And with all our releases, you know, we're an open core company. Um, you can probably follow along on our GitHub, but we, you know, have many customers who have over 10,000 nodes connecting to Teleport and are always making um, cache improvements and helping our customers run at scale. And this also includes such things as making continuous backups for DynamoDB much easier. Uh, so um, the release tour. So, for existing customers, this will be sort of familiar. This is kind of our teleport login for our proxy. But you know, since we about have about half developers and some people who are new, I'm going to go through our command line interface. This is the proxy that I have here, and I'm going to just log in using um, a GitHub auth. Um, so it just goes to teleport itself. I'm now logged in, and you can see my um, terminal here. I'm logged in as myself. I have an admin role. I have these logins and these logins are what you'd think of as like Unix principles. When you uh, like use Amazon Web Services, for example, often you would log in as EC2 user is the default user. And this is one of the real powerful things of Teleport is that it lets multiple people log in as this sort of shared uh, Unix user, but you also know who logged in when. We have Kubernetes enabled, I'll go through this afterwards. And you can also see here, so this is valid until um, 11 o'clock at night, so 12 hours. And what this means is once I've logged in, in the background, I have re received a uh, SSH certificate. And after that 12 hour period, I will need to authenticate again. And so this is one of sort of the foundational building blocks of Teleport is the concept of short lived certificates. And this also extends to um, applications and our Kubernetes support. So I'm just going to do uh, ls list out my servers. And so you can see this is our sort of foundational server product. Um, Going to tsh. Oh, this is not. Oh, I need to uh, log in. And so I'm going to just log in as root, and sort of now I'm in this server. And so that shows you the quick um, sort of experience that we have that's very developer focused. We sort of get out of your way compared to setting up very complicated SSH config uh, bastion options. So let me get out, Let's see if my interrupts. Okay, so I'm going to exit this. Um, and so now I'm going to come in and log in in the UI. And so one of our Hallmark things for this release is applications. And so, you know, because these are web applications, you know, having a web launcher is a great way to get started. So as Greg mentioned, we have a range of applications that say, you know, the Kubernetes dashboard is very tricky to put on the public internet. And many people have kind of got hacked once that has been exposed. Cause sort of when you when you're in here, you're sort of as a escalated user. And so you know, within this one click, a lot happened in the background. I'm gonna just gonna go to this diagram to help explain things a bit better. So, you know, my instance is it's running in AWS Cloud, and actually this uh, Kubernetes cluster is uh, micro Kubernetes, and it's actually running in an Intel box in my cupboard. And so, 
Um, I have a small Intel uh, teleport app process here that is dialing back to my uh, root cluster. And then this is proxying these other dashboards. And so a range of these are my, um, on my home network, which you can think as sort of a privileged network. And so when we were talking to customers, you know, one um, thing that we kind of know from 2020 is, you know, we're during a pandemic, everyone's working from home. You know, there's certain parts of applications that would be on a VPN. And so you can think of teleport application access as a possible alternative for providing secure access to these applications that you might have put, um, that might have only been available um, over a VPN. Um, and it makes access easier. And so some examples of some sort of more legacy applications, you know, I this is my home router, which is super unsophisticated. You know, it's an advanced password CGI bin. Um, but what we've done here is that we're just proxying all of this traffic through a reverse tunnel and, um, you know, really upgrades these applications that you may not be able to change. But if you can have the capability to upgrade sort of internal apps, you know, many of our customers have their own internal dashboards. Here's just a, a demo one that I've created. And you can see, you know, this is Chrome I'm logged in, but I'm also logged in to this demo app. And this is because this application takes advantage of JSON web tokens. And so uh, provided with application access, we provide you um, JWT assertions. So if I do JWT.io, um, can come in here. And so this is a great service from um, our friends Auth0, and it does let you decode these headers. And so you, um, in these headers, you can see we send along the cluster name, any roles, and the user. And so when you're building and extending your applications, you can use this to provide more logic within your application itself. Um, okay, you know, next up, we sort of have some developer tools, you know, Grafana is a relatively standard tool. This version, um, you still need to log into Grafana again, but we're actively working on a range of native integrations. So we'll take these JWT assertions and automatically log you in. And so you will have the uh, identity of users in those applications as well. Um, another favorite old kind of more legacy dashboard, you know, this is PHP, my admin, um, nothing else is too exciting here, but, um, because all of this is sort of built in the foundation of teleport, you also get the advantage of, our audit log. And, uh, if I come in here, you can see that, um, we've had a new session start event on Grafana. And you know this audit log, we launched this in 4.3, and it's a sort of a great way to get to learn about these JSON events. Many of our customers then um, pipe this into Splunk or whatever SIEM solution that they have to perform alerting. And so then you could create logic and be like, okay, well, why am I accessing Grafana at three in the morning? You know, is something kind of fishy happening? Um, and uh, let me. Okay, I think that comes to the end of applications. This is the new modal that I kind of mentioned, which makes it very easy to add new apps. We have instructions here on how um, you log in, you can create an app token. And when you start Teleport itself, once it's installed, all you need to do is run this one command with the app name and app URI. And this will um, proxy that application to the Teleport root server. And as you can show you the um, file config here, um, so Wellington is the name of my host in my cupboard. And so you could think of all of these apps. So along with having one app, you can have, uh, we can support multiple applications within one teleport config. And, uh, these, this IP address 10.0.1 is sort of my internal like, IP range. And so this could be that like the VPC IP range or whatever sort of network structure that you have. And these are all the various ports. Um, that we have in place. Another, oh, another thing I've not mentioned yet is um, the concept of labels. And so, exit this. Um, you can use labels in combination with teleports RBAC to really limit who has access um, 
to which applications. So in my example, you know, so I've been testing this out. Um, I've had more of my colleagues coming in and I'm like, okay, probably don't want all of my colleagues to be accessing all of my applications. And so to show you sort of a cool demo um, of our new waiting room feature, I'm gonna show um, a user logging in um, to try and request access to some of my apps. And so we have this, uh, remember the username and password for Elliot. Okay, um, and so this is also an example of a local user. We support many SSO providers um, and we have SAML and OIDZ connectors, but we have sort of instructions if you want to integrate with this Active Directory or one login. Oh. Make sure my token's right. Okay, so now um, Elliot has this message. So he's like, okay, I need to request access to the system. So um, I would uh, view Kate's dashboard. And so this new request message lets free form text messages, or we also have customers who um, get their teammates to send in a Jira ticket number, and then they use our API to match if that ticket matches in the girl. So this is sort of a very powerful feature for customers who are like working within multiple service providers to provide access. So um, that's gonna just get running in the background in this incognito tab. Um, and this server here is actually also my auth server. Um, so um, requests ls, can list this. You can see Elliot uh, has requested uh, access. So I'm not gonna actually help, okay. So I'm going to actually deny Uh, and so, you know, this is sort of a more of a manual workflow. Um, we're also going to be extending this into um, Teleport itself um, in the near future. Reason, um, not today. Okay, and so then, okay, yep, you can see he's been denied. And it's sort of the same workflow. You can like approve it, or you can provide a message like talk to your manager, or uh, sort of integrate this into your sort of application or API. Okay, exit this window. So sort of next up um, on our sort of product tour, I'm gonna go over our um, Kubernetes enhancements. And so our, um, for a long time, we would only, you'd only connect one Kubernetes cluster to one proxy. With the addition of Teleport 5, we support the connection of multiple clusters with one root cluster. And so you can see here, I have two clusters. I have um, Google Cloud and uh, micro Kubernetes um, running. So I'm gonna just log in just to get the certificate, make everything set up. Um, and I have a pod running here, it's the shell demo. Be making a query. And so, before Teleport 5, we only captured execs, but in this version, we capture nearly all of the commands that you run against the Kubernetes API. And so, you know, you can see it here. This is another kind of like JSON log. You get a lot of information about how, um, you know, what the end user is doing when they sort of interact with Kubernetes. But I'm going to also just exec into um, this pod. So, you know, kube cuddle exec for people who aren't in the sort of Kubernetes world is sort of very similar to um, sort of using SSH. And so sort of now I'm in this pod, um, you know, I can do, uh, see what's running. I have like Nginx uh, running on this host. And so, you know, there's a general movement of like, you know, humans shouldn't touch machines, you make things immutable, but there's always a chance that you might want to run some debug program. Um, 
and that's sort of what we enable is the very user friendliness of getting access to the system, but also having the audit log of what happened during that session. And so, so you can see a few other um, requests here. I started. And here we have um, a sort of recording. So this is sort of like a DVR for your terminal. So in combination with the sort of raw JSON, sometimes it's helpful to see the output of what people were um, doing during that session. And you can see this is the same for uh, SSH sessions as well. Uh, OK, um, I think this brings me pretty uh, to a good holding point for the product tour. Um, So um, next, Mark's up, next up, I'm just going to give a quick uh, overview of our roadmap. Um, you know, this is the five release, but just going back one release, 4.4, we were heavily focused on session streaming, which enabled us to also rework a lot of our um, audit log. And also for some customers, we can stream session events directly to the Teleport Auth server in combination with concurrent session control. And this was sort of feedback for people who are in um, more heavily regulated environments. Um, and concurrent session control is one NIST control. And so, you know, that help people who are on the FedRAMP journey. And as we've gone over, we have Teleport Application Access and our Kubernetes enhancements. Um, coming in 5.1, we are going to be rolling out Teleport Database Access. I have a exciting preview for you as well. And in 5.2, we're going to be combining our sort of SSO in combination with hardware tokens. And so, well, SSO and a central identity provider is good. In combinations with hardware tokens, we have really helped strengthen the security of Teleport itself. This is going to be initially using YubiKeys. And one of the benefits of this is um, the hardware token will also store your private key material. And so this sort of stops the vulnerability of the um, your private key getting exfiltrated from your laptop. And so, you know, if your company's looking at um, device management about keeping up to date, you, this sort of lets you feel more secure that it's less likely that private key material, even from that sort of short 12 hour period, is less likely to get exfiltrated. And as I've sort of gone through this access, access workflow improvements, um, we're going to be providing a user interface and more examples for API about how you can integrate it into your workflow. And lastly, you know, we have Teleport Cloud now. Um, we are in early access um, and we'll sort of go more GA in January. Um, I'll go over this in a sec. And so database access. And so as Greg mentioned, you know, we have this um, Teleport access plane, you know, we have applications, um, servers, Kubernetes, you know, the next thing talking to our customers, we're like, oh, this would be great if we could have this same uh, control and visibility, but also user experience for providing database access. And so we currently have a preview for PostSQL, um, and this works for sort of dedicated on metal instances, and we fully support IAM roles and PostSQL on Aurora and RDS. And so we have a link here that you can preview some of uh, the information about this service. Teleport Cloud, um, you know, we have many customers who are just sort of cloud native. They don't necessarily want to run another bit of infrastructure. And we've taken our uh, best in class team of uh, security and DevOps engineers in our in-house internally, and we can run Teleport in the best configuration that's secure. And so you don't have to. And another sort of pro of just the Teleport ecosystem, also if you were an on-prem customer, you can use our trusted cluster feature to fully integrate all of these uh, resources and sort of plug everything into this one um, Teleport Cloud instance. So to learn more for um, Teleport Cloud, you know, we recommend to go teleport.com, get started. There's three options there. For people who are sort of new to Teleport, I would recommend starting with our community edition. Everything here, apart from the access workflow, is included. Um, 
So this is a great way to get started and try it out. Um, if you think this would be something that would be useful to your organization, you can, you can talk to our sales team and they can help uh, roll it out. And the third option is you can sign up for early access. We're looking for customers to um, try out Teleport Cloud and give us early access. If you're interested in you know, a more technical overview of what's happening, you can check out our change log here. Um, and it goes more in depth with file configs and what you need to do to update your infrastructure. And it's the same with our documentation. Um, we, for this version today, we've released release candidate two. Um, it's not our production release. So if for existing customers, we would recommend this is a good time to try it in staging environments but I would highly recommend waiting for the GA release. Just keep a watch on our downloads page um, for when that should drop, should be early next week. All right, Greg, it's time to right. sprinkle me with some questions. Just a reminder, we are taking questions in the Q&A tool. Uh, I've got a few good ones here already. Uh, let's try to take this from easy to hard. Uh, so, um, uh, Lewis is asking, uh, which of these features are available on the open source edition versus the commercial enterprise edition? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so application access um, and database access will all be in the open source edition. Um, the one feature that I sort of demo today is more around um, these access workflows um, and other organizations. The GitHub integration is in our community edition. And so that's the one SSO provider that you can use in community without having to upgrade. All right. And uh, are version 4.x clients compatible with Teleport 5? We have a good um, docs page around upgrade procedures. As a rule, we recommend starting with uh, upgrading your auth server, then your proxy, then your nodes. There shouldn't be anything that stops it, but um, I'd highly recommend people who are going through the upgrade tree to not skip a step, especially because in 4.4, we made lots of changes to our um, auditing subsystem. And so um, for clients and nodes, I'd recommend just going, you know, up one upgrade each time. All right, and uh, Tony is asking, uh, can we reveal any plans for uh, raw port access or uh, uh, a service like RDP? You know, we are always, you know, interested in talking to customers for um, RDP interest. If you just send me an email, I'm ben at goteleport.com um, and we can, you know, collect your requirements and see what sort of problems you're currently having around RDP access. All right. Uh, okay. Which um, Kubernetes distros uh, and services does Teleport support? So, you know, it's, we go back a long way in the Kubernetes ecosystem. I believe our current changes, you need a 1.10 cluster. Um, you know, this uh, GKE cluster that I demoed here, I think is 117. Um, but it's pretty backwards compatible. We've tested it with um, not only bare metal Kubernetes, but also um, AWS EKS, uh, Google's container service, and IBM's um, container service as well. Okay. And so one of the kind of cool, good benefits, Greg, is you can like, use teleport as this sort of one central management. Um, so if I do cube LS, you know, I only have two here. So if you have like multiple classes, instead of having to deal with sort of complicated IM each time, you can just use teleport to quickly switch if you happen to be in like a multi-cloud um, ecosystem. And this is a perfect segue to yet another question, which is for multiple uh, case clusters, would one require would one be required to provide for each cluster the cube config, or uh, or uh, can you still run a as a sort of a, a kh proxy with uh, maybe without full proxy auth server? Yeah, we have a range of different like matrices that you can run. Um, whoever asked that question, also if you send me an email, um, you know we can probably get back to you 
about the best way to run it. Also for customers who are um, going through the upgrade migration procedure, there's sort of a few steps and these aren't currently documented, but I'm actually working on the documentation today with our developer. Okay, uh, let's see. Question about uh, teleport YAML files. Uh, if you're a um, doing a lot of uh, or putting a lot of stuff into teleport, the YAML file can get pretty unwieldy. Uh, do we have any plans to add includes or um, uh, or a set teleport .d? Um, we don't right now, but probably my best recommendation would be to create a ticket on our um, open source issue, you know, we're, um, you know, you can see here, this is our sort of change log, but, you know, because we're sort of an open core company, everything is sort of open source, you know, you can see us putting the last few pull requests in. Um, you can come in here, create an issue. Um, I would search first, but we'd definitely be open for sort of improvements. For our, when we launched our plugins, we tried Tommel as a different alternative, but I mean, yeah, we could definitely feel the YAML pain. So. If there's a large push in the community, we'll um, consider another option as well. Uh, next question is, uh, what can we do in terms of session recordings uh, with application access? Uh, or is it just the uh, audit of the um, of, of access control and login? Yeah, so you get, um, if I come in here, we currently have uh, like this session data chunk and um, this is a more raw output of the HTML that is passed. It's not, you know, like a DVR kind of playback. Um, similar thing, you know, we kind of like just try to capture as much information as possible. And then we'll look at like visualization and putting it into, um, you know, how we would alert or like what would be helpful for people. So if that customer wants to get back to me, we're also, you know, in the early stages to try and improve and sort of give useful information of all of this kind of like raw data, you know, like if you record every event, it's a lot. So um, we'd be very interested to learn like what would be the key things, maybe it's uh, paths or maybe it's certain um, actions. All right, and then we have a question. Can applications be exposed via external URL that points to the proxy or must they be ac uh, accessed via the prox proxy user UI? Yeah, it's a great question. So we have built it. <clears throat> so you, let me see here. Uh, you see all of these ones have a kind of a more of a, a public adder that is set. This doesn't have to be, um, this domain name. Um, if I actually come in here, um, I can show you an example. Um, of so this one, like Bizland, isn't set, and so Bizland goes on a subdomain. Um, but the one thing you need to do is when setting this up, you need basically a to also get a the one certificate for asteroid.earth, and then this is also a wildcard certificate. Um, but Teleport Proxy uses SNI to sort of cleverly route things. Um, and so this can be helpful, you know, if I go to uh, one of these URLs, it will kind of like route me in. Hopefully that answers the question. Excellent. All right. Last question is changes to our uh, pricing model. Um, it's fair to say that really the changes to our pricing model for if you're if you want supported is really related to the new features. So now that we have application access, that is a um, a new uh, uh, a new kind of uh, metric you can uh, also add to your commercial license. And then we also now provide uh, pricing for uh, uh, clouds. So those would be really the additions to what you might already be familiar with. But for more information, I'd encourage you to talk with our sales team. All right, and that concludes all the questions we have. Ben, thank you so much. Uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, this video and the slides will be available posted be for the beginning of next week. You will get an email when they are available. Uh, once again, thank you for your time. Thanks, everyone.